welcome back hip cats and groovy chicks welcome to the jazz ranch you know last week I put out a video on my story and I was overwhelmed with the response I mean so many people wrote to me telling me their story that it kind of changed my life I have a different direction now with my videos in other words I want to talk more about the spiritual side of music rather than just the mundane kind of thing of like learning developing your chops and quotes about uh, musicians and how what they did in their lives and so on I want to make it more important so I'm going to use a quote by Ram Das now and this has to do with your own personal approach to your music you know your personal voice and it, he said this the spiritual journey is individual highly personal it can't be organized or regulated it isn't true that everyone should follow one path listen to your own truth now that's important because you have to find your own voice in music you have to be an individual you you need to learn from other people you need to imitate you know the great musicians in a certain way but you also need to find your own voice and your own individualism you know that's the best thing you can find and that's not easy to find you have to work for that but I'm going to show you something about a request I've had to, to talk more about the jazz phrasing and jazz rhythm in other words how do you phrase a melody how do you syncopate a line a melodic line how do you improvise using swing eights versus straight eights all those things have to do with the individualism of jazz what this unique sound and finding your own voice and how to express yourself within jazz phrasing so here we go now starting out I just want to explain that there's an underlying rhythm going on when you're playing the piano and you're playing in a trio which is should be your objective you know you can play solo that's fine you don't have to worry about that but if you're gonna play with the trio there's a rhythm going on and essentially if you reduce it down to its simplest form the bass player is playing on the beat one and the beat three if you're playing in a two beat and the drummer is playing the rhythm and putting the hi-hat on two and four so the strong beats are on one and three and then the upbeats you could call them or the offbeats are on two and four so what makes it swing is that two and four rhythm underneath you know so this is underneath what you're playing in in your hands and the way you're phrasing but you have to understand that underneath rhythm that's going on in order to swing in order to be really play and if you're going to play with the rhythm section that, that that's very important now when the bass player starts to play in four what he's doing is he's walking the bass line but there's still always going to be that accent on you know in the bass on one and three and also on two and four with the drummer now I've heard bass players that also accent on the two and four so that's possible too but you have, want to have that rhythm that's why we snap or we clap on the two and four in jazz which is not the case when you clap for uh, you know country music or rock and roll or something else I'm gonna look at chapter 12 of my book book one called jazz rhythm and phrasing and I talk about syncopation and syncopation is defined as a shift of accent in a passage or phrase that occurs when a normally weak beat is accented or stressed so here you have example one of the song the melody line for fly me to the moon and it's written very straight the way you might see it in a fake book with no syncopation it's like this okay so example two now shows the same melody with jazz syncopation and so now what's going to happen is you're going to hear accents that are off the beat or not right on the beat and you're going to hear some eighth notes and some different rhythm in the line here it's going to go like this you see so now we'll analyze this and we'll talk about variations that we can play in this rhythm and that's going to teach us how we can express ourselves rhythmically in our own special way now also in chapter 12 jazz rhythm and phrasing I talk about swing eights now this is an important aspect of jazz phrasing um, and here are examples of eighth notes 
that are written a certain way and how you play them in different styles. In other words, this is written as straight eights. Now you're going to play them in classical music or rock just the way they're written. Or even pop music or Latin music is going to play them. Okay, now ragtime, this second example is ragtime. It's going to be more like a dotted eighth and a sixteenth. So it's going to be like that. You know. So now the third example is the jazz swing, which is a legato sound in which the first note is going to have twice the value of the second note. In other words, on the ragtime it's three times the value. So this is a little bit longer. It's like closer to the straight eighths. So it's more like and it's more legato. You see, so now I'm going to give you another example of that that explains it a little more in depth. On the subject of, of straight eighth versus swing eighths or ragtime eighths, straight eighths are just going to be One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, you know, so that will apply to most rock music, classical music, pop music, Latin music. It's the way it's written is the way you play it. Now ragtime is more like um, a dotted eighth note and a sixteenth, so it's more bouncy sounding, I guess you could call it. Like that. So now jazz swing is more, first of all, it's more legato, and the first note is held longer than the second. It's like long short, and it's actually twice the value of the second, but it's closer to the, to the straight eighths. So it's more like... Like that. See, now... Jazz syncopation is going to not just be eighth notes, so you have to vary it with the syncopation with the rests and the pauses in between notes and all that sort of thing. So maybe the best way I can show you the three different types of, of eighth notes is to apply them to uh, the song Fly Me to the Moon and play it, well not classical or rock or pop, but maybe Latin style, you know, so that could be... Uh, so now I'm just going to do the eighth notes now. It's going to be like this. Okay, you see how they're even now? That's Latin. So now ragtime would be kind of sing-songish, like um, like that. You see, it's more sing-songish or bouncy. I'd like to think of it. Mm -mm. Now the jazz is going to be smoother sounding. It's going to be more legato. And uh, let's go like this. And you see, so it's closer to the straight eighths, but it's it's also syncopated in such a way that you're not just playing all eighth notes. That's the most important thing about syncopation. You're not just playing eighth notes, but you want to get those eighth notes to swing and so that's the sound. So now I want to talk about the jazz feel and I'm going to apply it to the song Fly Me to the Moon. So I want to talk about phrasing, jazz rhythm, which is syncopation, and also swing eights. Now in the melody of the song you're going to have a certain way it's written out in a fake book but now you're going to play it according to your own personal style rhythmically so that you might vary the rhythm of the melody. First example as just being playing it may, the way it might be written in a fake book like this. See, 
that's pretty square. That's not swinging. So like we need to play more syncopation, which is offbeats. In other words, accent the offbeats like this. You see, and there's also notes that have been shortened and some, some notes have been elongated, like that's shortened. Ba -da -ba. This is elongated. And then the next one's short. And there's an accent. And there's a short note. You see, so that combination of short notes and long, and long notes gives you syncopation plus better phrasing. So that's the key to it. Now here's another one, example. You might do the first note might be shorter, like, and these might be off beats, like, like that, or like. That's another way to play it rhythmically. So you can personalize this to your own taste. Here's another one. You see, there's like so many possibilities. This becomes a very personal thing that becomes your expression of how you want that melody to sound, and it might change every time you play it. You know, I know Bill Evans played a song, once he learned it a certain way, he played it that way for every performance with slight variations. But you can, as a jazz artist, as a jazz player, you can vary that rhythm any way you like in the given moment, you know, in the, in the present as you're playing it. So now I need to explain how you count these syncopated rhythms because if you can't count it, you're not going to understand it unless you're the kind of person that just can feel rhythm and you don't need to look at, you don't need to count, you just feel it naturally, whatever. But anyway, what you have to do is I'm going to break it down into just eighth notes and everything is going to hit rhythmically on either a downbeat or, or a upbeat, an upbeat. So like here you have, this is an example of just looking at the downbeats and upbeats. So here, if you like, have all eighth notes, it's like this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So it can hit anywhere within that spectrum of notes. In other words, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you an example of something that I played and how to count it. So as a review, if you learn beginner piano and counting, then you'll see that this, I'm going to give you the simplest version which is playing it from a fake book and the most simple version of it and how to count it. So it's like one, two, and, right? One, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four. In order to play that you have to be able to count it. So you can see that the one, you don't have to count the end, like I have to go one and two and I don't have to count the end when it's not needed. So it's one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four. So now we're going to take a syncopated version that is complex and try to count it. So now if you take a complicated rhythmic phrase like this, you're going to have to count it very slowly like this and count, count the ends where they're needed like one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. Like that, see? So. Now that you've counted the phrase, now you can play it with a jazz feeling more like this. There you go. Next thing I want to talk about in terms of a jazz interpretation of a song, Fly Me to the Moon, is how you can add extra notes. In other words, the melody is this. So I'm going to add extra notes like this. It's very simple. I just added a couple of notes, but you see, you could go. It's 
I'm just adding an extra note in there. And that's an easy thing to do. The other thing is to put a little turn in there. We call it turn like this. A turn is this. So I'm putting in an eighth note with a sixteenth. So like this. So that's another device you can use in, ter in terms of melodic embellishment, we'll call it. Like, you know. There's some variations of that. So now understanding how to play jazz syncopation means you need to understand the idea of playing on the beat with long tones and short tones and off the beat with long tones and short tones. So a metronome will help with that. You know, just establishing a tempo. I haven't picked out anyone in particular, but I'll pick sort of like a medium tempo, like that's... See, so long on the beat would be... Short on the beat would be... Long off the beat would be... Short off the beat would be... Now that's, that's everything that's going on, at least in a simplified way. In other words, just eighth notes or, you know, simple rhythms. We're not talking about like sixteenth notes or complex rhythms or phrasing that is, uh, you know, you're going to get into phrasing that is much more complex than that. But you need to understand how to do that first. That's a good starting point is just maybe to practice with a metronome and play, uh, try playing, you know, those, those, those concepts like, let's play on the beat. And so on. So like you might try it that way, long or... Just add living now. Let's do off the beat. Two, three, four. Like that. Now let's go with short off the beat. Three, four. Now you might want to start by combining them or not using the metronome. Just try to, you know, count with your beat with your foot and do it that way. Another thing that's very important to understand is the idea of how you play the phrase and accent certain notes. In other words, to make it swing or to make it syncopated, jazz syncopation requires that you accent certain notes that are off the beat, like this. I'm going to play it straightly. That's with no accents. Now with the accents, it's like... Like that, see? You see, that's like a beat. You see, those accents are so important to the phrasing, how you phrase the line, you know, so that it has flow and it has meaning and it has uh, syncopation. The essence of jazz is syncopation, so you have to have those accents. You just can't play at all the notes of the same value or the same, you know, intensity. This uh, it gives certain notes, uh, it swings better. <laughs> now I'm going to combine, using the metronome on two and four, now I'm going to combine the things I've talked about. The syncopation, the accents and phrasing, the swing eights on the solo, and interpreting the, the melody rhythmically the way you feel it in the moment. So here we go. 
First of all, I have to give time. Give yourself some time to really feel the beat. One. One, two. One, two. You want to not be in two and four. One, two, three. And then you can kind of vamp. I'm just vamping again. So I can feel that beat. Always listening to the metronome. Feeling it. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. Please write to me. I'll love to hear from you, and I will always try to respond. And until next time, I have one more Ram Dass quote for you, and it is this. Only that in you, which is me, can hear what I'm saying. I love that. Until next time, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.